Welcome to the Sussex Football Show with me, Dean Kilford, and powered by your instant replay. Worthing named a surprisingly strong starting 11 for their Sussex County Cup tie at home to Uckfield. After an even 25 minutes, the home side were given a free kick after Ajiboy was brought down on the edge of the area. Step up Sam Rents, who has made a habit of scoring these, his third identical free kick in his many games. Plenty of chances were created, but Worthing had to wait until five minutes into the second half to grab their second, Isaac Newton getting his first since his return to the club. AFC Uckfield had a good run in the FA Cup against some illustrious opponents and showed a fighting spirit as an unmarked Balo Kamara was left to head home just three minutes later. Swift counter-attack saw Worthing burst forward with numbers. Ajiboy eventually found Meekums, who scored his second in as many games since returning to the club. Just after the hour, David Adjuboy was all alone in the box and tapped home his ninth of the season to make it four. <laughs> Meekums then added his second, the pick of the night, blasting into the top corner with just seven minutes to go. Straight from the restart, Matt McLean found space in between the Worthing defence and he grabbed a consolation for Uckfield Town. There was still time for substitute Gerard Rance to grab a sixth. A nice one-two between Rance and Meekham saw the former drive into the box and beat the keeper at the near post. So Worthing then are through to the next round after a goal fest at the Bibby Financial Services Stadium. Hastings United are currently second in the Bostick South East Division and fancied their chances against the Salt Lane United team that have been struggling for form of late. But it was the home side that took the lead, Toby House capitalising on the mistake from Christie to score the simplest of goals. Midway through the first half, Saltling were two up. Jamie Brotherton allowed too much time to waltz around the Hastings midfield and Curtis Gaylor struck a beauty from 30 yards. He just doesn't score simple goals. Just before half-time, Golding was released on the right. He managed to squeeze the ball across the face of the goal to Ogbo, who somehow chipped the keeper from the edge of the six-yard box. Once again, Golding was causing problems for Saltine on the right. This time his cutback missed his intended target, but Ibrahim was there on hand to drill home and level the tie. Saldine were pushing and had a golden opportunity to retake the lead. Brotherton's shot blocked from close range. Although he was furious, a penalty was not awarded as he was clearly being held back. 
That miss was to prove costly as another attack down the right from Golding picked out Dixon, who couldn't have placed his header any better just inside the upright. At the other end, it clearly wasn't going to be Brotherton's night as another close range effort was expertly saved. Hastings United sealed the tie when Man of the Match Golding provided his fourth assist of the game, this time finding substitute Walter Bath, who swept the ball home. So Hastings United progressed to the next round of Assault Dean United. It's a third defeat in five. Three Bridges are at the wrong end of the Bostick South East and wanted to forget their league form as they took on Shoreham in the Sussex Senior Cup. The visitors came closest to open the scoring when O'Neill's free kick curled just past the post. Shoreham they thought they took the lead when Ryan McBride capitalised on the slip from the Three Bridges defender. The referee eventually deemed it was a foul. Brandon O'Neill then sealed this tie in the 84th minute with his headed goal as three bridges progress to the next round. Burgess Hill Town were looking to get back-to-back -back victories as Kingstonian visited the Green Elephant Stadium. Andre McCollin has been in great form since returning from injury and he almost put Burgess Hill Town in front but this dipping effort came crashing back of the crossbar with the keeper beaten. Moments later surely the home side should have been awarded a penalty when Pope's header was saved on the line by the defender's arm. McCollin was again in the thick of the action at the start of the second half, forcing his way through on goal, only to see his effort blocked by Rob Tolfrey in the Kingstonian net. Kingstonian conceded two late goals in their previous game at Worthing, but it was they who looked to have stolen the points when an attack down the left saw the ball pulled back to Elliot Buchanan, and he slot home. Tom Cadman had the chance to level from this free kick. But his effort went the wrong side of the post. That late Buchanan goal was enough to steal it for the visitors and hand defeat to Simon Wormel in his first game since being appointed permanent head coach. Lewis welcomed Merthyr Town in the FA Trophy, looking to continue their fine home form which has seen them lose only one in eight games in all competitions. James Hammond opened the scoring in the 13th minute when he deceived everyone, including the Merthyr goalkeeper, and his free kick curled into the corner when everyone was expecting a cross. Five minutes before half-time, a nice interchange of passes between Bluden, Smith and Lawson saw Conlon with the opportunity to shoot, but instead Bluden nipped in. And his effort had too much power for the Merthyr keeper to handle, and the hosts were two to the good. <laughs> Merthyr's best chance came in stoppage time, this vicious effort just clearing the top of the bar. and there was still time for Lewis Carey to be called into action. So Lewis progressed to the third qualifying round of the FA Trophy for the second season in a row. Worthing were playing their fourth home game in a row as they took on Chesham United in the FA Trophy. In 
the 18th minute, Jesse Starkey worked hard to dig out a cross, and David Adjiboy nipped in front of his marker to head home his 10th of the season and give Worthing the lead. The hosts were then reduced to 10 men just before half time. Sam Rents giving his marching orders after receiving a second yellow card. Despite being a man short, Worthing almost doubled their lead when this deflected free kick beat the keeper but came back off the bar. Chesham were relying on set pieces to try and break the Worthing defence and this corner was the closest they came to getting level. The header just hit in the wrong side of the upright. Worthing then had Cleeton Perntrow to thank as he adjusted his body brilliantly to get down low and thwart another Chesham attack. Chesham then had the bar to thank again when James Crane's thumping header cannon back into play. Then a stunning save denied Barker on the rebound. And Worthing really should have sealed the tie when Adjuboy skipped between two defenders and rounded the keeper before losing his balance at the vital moment. And that was it. Chesham couldn't find a way through the steely Worthing defence who kept their first clean sheet in 13 games and go through to the next round. Salt Dean United were looking to bounce back from their Sussex Senior Cup defeat to Hastings United with victory at home to Langley Wanderers. And they got the perfect start when Toby House capitalised on a poor defensive header and nutmeg the keeper to give the Tigers a third minute lead. Just two minutes later they were at it again. Rutherton allowed far too much space on the left. And he picked out House at the back post to double his tally and put Saltley two up. Saltley had been two up against Hastings before collapsing in their previous game. But there was no repeat of that today. Jamie Brotherton bringing down this ball superbly with his right foot before unleashing a stunning effort with his left that gave the keeper no chance. Ten minutes into the second half and House should have claimed his hat-trick, but this flicked effort was cleared off the line. Langley's reprieve was short-lived and Brotherton joined House on two for the game and eight for the season with this clever finish at the near post. Yeah. Langley would claim a consolation in bizarre circumstances. Tariq Straker's deep cross ending up in the back of the net. That was to be the end of the scoring and that victory sees Salt Dean United climb up to fifth in the Southern Combination Football League. Crawley Wasps took on Queen's Park Rangers girls in the FA Cup having won all 13 of their games so far this season. And it took them just 13 minutes to take the lead. Kamina Weber getting the rub of the green as the ball rebounded off her and into the back of the net. The rain came crashing down and the floodgates started to open. Emma Plea were doubling the host's lead off she was played through on goal, although the ball almost held up in a puddle on the line. Four minutes after the restart it was three. Plea were knocking the ball round the keeper to score her second of the day.
On the hour mark, Megan Stowe lit up the crowd with this sweet strike from 25 yards to make it 4 0. And just four minutes later, Plewa grabbed her hat trick. Bursting down the left, she was allowed to drive to the six yard box, and she wasn't going to miss from there. The scoring wasn't over yet though. A quick free kick released Sean Heather whose effort was saved. Ariana Fleischman though on hand to get in on the act. So for the fifth time this season, Crawley Wasps have scored six or more goals in the game. They're definitely the team to look out for as their FA Cup run continues. New Haven ladies travel to Salt Dean in a repeat of last year's League Cup final. And it was New Haven who took the lead. Salt Dean failed to clear their lines and they were punished by a calm guided strike that nestled into the top corner. Out of nothing, Salt Dean were level. Great pressing by Casey Sands as she won the ball back deep in the New Haven half, but she still had some work to do as her efforts swerved over the keeper from 20 yards. Salt Dean took the lead early in the second half. A quick throw from Sands saw Ellie Smith bear down on goal, and she made no mistake as she guided her shot into the far corner. Hesitation at the back allowed Lauren and Marina in, and the striker gave the keeper no chance as she flashed her shot into the corner. New Haven weren't done yet though, perennial goal scorer Chloe Winchester firing one into the top corner from the edge of the area to give New Haven hope. But time was against them and Salt Dean held on for three precious points and climb above their local neighbours up to fourth in the league. Thank you for watching the Sussex Football Show. I've been Dean Kilford and we'll be back next week with all the best of Sussex football powered by your instant replay.